Namaste. Today, I want to talk about Tulika and Mandi and their predictions in the 12 houses. And some other things as well. I will not limit myself to the 12 houses only. So we'll go in depth into the topic. What happened uh, some uh, some days ago, I was, you know, watching it or uh, looking at a chart. I was doing a consultation. I just mentioned about Bulika and Mandi. Bulika. Who a client. Who was also a student of astrology. And as I mentioned about Gulika, she said that, sir, you are mentioning it about some other astrology systems. I said, no. It is normal astrology only. The astrology that all of us practice, the traditional astrology. But the problem is that nowadays astrologers even don't know normal astrology completely. What to talk on other things gulika and mandi they are considered as the son of saturn they are considered as the children of saturn and we already know that saturn is a dreaded planet so are the gulika and mandi when i was learning in kerala my guru told me that Gulika and Mandi are the most evil planet in horoscope. He told me to take the seventh aspect of Gulika and Mandi and told that wherever house Gulika and Mandi is situated in, there is a huge problem in that house. And the technique of Gulika and Mandi is very important in Prashna, Natal chart, as well as Muhutta. There is no stream of astrology where Gulika and Mandi are not given importance. But Gulika is not always bad only, of course. It is sometimes good as well. So today we will explore this particular topic. But first of all, before we go to that topic, we have to address the fish in the room. Sorry, the elephant in the room. Gulika and Mandi are the same planets or they are two different planets. Traditional astrologers opine that Gulika and Mandi are the same planets. Whereas some classics like Sarvart Chintamani clearly differentiates between Gulika and Mandi. I will go with the simple opinion. Gulika is a time factor. Mandi is a predictive factor. This is the difference between these two. I will not go into technicalities of that. So just take this statement that Gulika is a time factor and Mandi is a predictive factor. If you take them as two different entities, if you take them only a single entity, then only take Mandi. This is what is advised traditionally. I have also discussed about my calculation of Gulika and Mandi in one of my previous videos, which dealt with uh, my calculations of Jagannath Pura. There I have dealt with what's the real calculation of Gulika and Mandi and which settings I do in my Jehora to find Gulika and Mandi. Because the calculation of Gulika and Mandi as given in Jagannath Pura is incorrect. So what is the correct calculation? I have mentioned that in one of my articles. I, let me tell you one thing. Like if you're watching my channel and if you don't know about my website or the blog section that I write, you're missing upon a whole lot of things. I have written in this website. This is my third website. I made a website first, deleted it. Then the previous website is available that is now discontinued. And this is the third website. And I have written a whole lot of articles in my complete astrological career by far from 2009. I have written uh, something more than 375 articles by far. And in this website, the new website, there is some 200 articles and they are all a goldmine of principles. 
and i have written articles on almost everything combust planet retrograde planet uh, results of different ascendants planet in different houses etc etc i have written a whole lot of results on my website in my blog section if you haven't checked that check it out right now my website is www.shubhamalak.com when you open it you get a screen like this this is the home screen then you click on this blog section this is the blog and i have written i have written a recent article in april 2020 i haven't written anything after that that is on astamangal rog prashna and i have written multiple articles i have written article on how to worship shiva i have given predictions on the delhi elections 2020 which also came true right and i have also written on karma elections of 2019 and is nin case uh, study multiple things i have written right and in this astamangal rog prashna article which many people have copied over the years since i have written it in 2020 it is a very extensive very exhaustive article of 8000 words and many people have started copying this article and started teaching ashtamangal prashna kerala prashna in their courses websites whatever in this article i have mentioned about the right calculation of mulli nayan month in my previous video on jagannath hora i have once again mentioned it and given reference to the website it is right here right the calculation of gulika in month so what you can do now if you actually want to calculate it just stop the video take a screenshot of it and it is written in quite an illustrative manner you can easily calculate it right i will not elaborate more upon it right but the cal right calculation is given here in my web in my website in a article named ashtamangala rog prashna right and i have given the calculations for the day time as well as the right night time there are two particular calculations which i have dealt with in this particular article coming to the topic of gulika and mandi in the 12 houses and the predictions that they give birth to and the results that they give birth to. before we go further there is one very particular technique that i will want to mention as i told you earlier in the kerala system we only take mandi and treat gulika as the time factor in my tradition right so i will refer to it as mandi there is a rule mandi with ascendant afflicts one's intelligence mandi in the ascendant is a person whose intelligence is low who is not understanding things properly whose intellect is not supporting him whose ideas are not supporting him along with it mandi in the ascendant is also bad for longevity it curtails the longevity and it gives health problems added to that mandi in the ascendant gives a very charismatic handsome personality and many people are attracted towards such a person having mandi in the ascendant it is generally for any ascendant if your ascendant is having a malefic then generally to such people people of opposite gender are generally very much attracted right so malefic in the ascendant the person is highly attractive highly popular in the people of opposite ascendant specifically gulik specifically mandi in the ascendant gives a very charismatic personality but cut is the longevity and other results that i have told you gulika with moon is bad with gulika with moon is specifically bad for longevity it gives mental troubles depression anxiety the person is not very social he keep keeps things on his own he will think on uh, multiple topics without uh, and will not be able to reach at a conclusion along with this mandi with moon makes the person strangled in his own thoughts when the person goes on to do things multiple ideas disturb him and he left he will is not able to complete things right generally what will happen that first of all he will contemplate a lot before doing things and because of that contemplation he will not be able to do it 
even after multiple tries when the person starts working on something other ideas disturb him and because of that disturbance he is not able to complete the work with single focus mandi with sun is specifically bad for the lineage generally mandi with sun creates problem with progeny there is a delay or in worst cases there is even a denial of progeny if uh, mandi is with sun if mandi is with mars then the person suffers through serious blood related issues the person suffers through short temper the person suffers the person is uh, the person cannot consume milk in cannot consume milk is what i have generally seen mandi with mars also creates problem with the blood circulation of the person it makes the person unnecessarily short tempered and gives him anger related issues mandi with mercury generally indicates a person who is misunderstood generally indicates a person who doesn't want to hurt anyone but his words eventually end up hurting the person right mandi with mercury gives gives problem in communication gives problem in writing reading and generally mandi with mercury is a very strong indicator of great losses in business specifically related to stock market speculation and other things mandi with jupiter makes the person and out of the box thinker the person may not believe in the concept of god the person may believe in a godless society right the person believes that the self is the ultimate truth and he doesn't believe in a constitution called god it is a super confident person who thinks that i am always right when mandi is with jupiter along with this mandi with jupiter will also give problems related to progeny give problems related to money the person is an out of box thinker it is he is always disturbed in his life and uh, at times he may feel that he has been very unfortunate in life mandi with venus gives relationship issues mandi with venus gives a sexuality and uh, sexuality related issues mandi with venus gives issues in the private parts the person may not perform well sexually he there may be some delay or denials in marriage the marital life is not good when mandi is with venus along with this it may give a beautiful looking spouse but the spouse will be unable to bear children the spouse may have multiple affairs or even the person may be in contact with lowly woman lowly woman with woman of lower standards right so uh, mandi with uh, venus generally such people are given to prostitutions they visit prostitutes or even if they don't visit prostitute you know these people for the sake of being in relationship can be in relationship with anyone without considering the caste creed etc of the person they are having a relationship with generally if i have to say it in one word mandi is bad with any planet he conjoins with or bad in any house he is situated in any rashi he is placed in. first thing right there are some there are some conditions where mandi gives the good result we will come to it by the end of the video and uh, i will also be giving you remedies related to mandi in between Right, so watch every word of the video carefully. Not only this video, every video of mine. See, I I don't have a written script, so that I tell you in the starting of the video what all I am going to cover and what all I am not going to cover. I am like quite a manmoji kind kind of a guy. I will cover anything that I want. I will not cover anything that I don't want. It's very simple with me, right? I cannot give you a prime. I cannot give you a framework. So coming back to our topic, Mandi with Saturn generally. tells that the person is not getting benefited through his servants his works is not getting completed whenever he undertakes something the thing is left incomplete the person want uh, the person wants to run from responsibilities generally such people with hen having mandi connected to their saturn are cheated by many they are they don't reach the heights in their professional life which everyone expected them to be at like there are many cheatings in the professional life with them and uh, the longevity 
and health becomes a problem when Mandi is with Saturn. When Mandi is with Rahu, the cheatings from people continue. Mandi with Rahu can also land someone in jail, can land someone in scandals. Mandi with Rahu also makes sure that the person is very charismatic, handsome, popular. But the person has some inferior tendencies. The person doesn't live a very good life. A Mandi with uh, Rahu or Ketu gives a tendency to have pets at home, specifically dogs and dogs with Rahu and cats with Ketu. Uh, Mandi with uh, Rahu makes sure that the person gets shocking events. The person confronts shocking events every one, two, three years in life. There's a repetitive pattern when Mandi is with Rahu. Mandi with Ketu makes people lose many things, many people unexpectedly. Mandi with Ketu also tells that the person is not able to concentrate on something and there is a blow of bad fortune that generally swipes his life. Mandi with Ketu also indicates person being affected by natural calamities and person being affected by the things which are not in his control. Right? Remedy, if you want to do a remedy for Ra, uh, for Gulika and Mandi, choose the remedy as per the houses that I am going to tell you and as per the Rashis that I am going to tell you. Mandi in the ascendant, the results we have already discussed. Mandi in the second house is very bad for marriage. Mandi in the second house is bad for marriage, finances, savings and happiness from family. Mandi in the third house is good. Right? Mandi is good in the third house. Although the relationship with the siblings for such person are not good. Siblings don't give profit to such person. But those having Mandi in the third house are very are valorous, enterprising. They get success in business. Their communication is very good. And they will be, they will be fortunate and they will never have the scarcity of money, whatever they wish and desire, everything will get fulfilled. Mandi in the fourth house is very bad for emotional development. There may be strained relationship with mother. There can be cheatings related to property. There can be vehicle accidents. The person is generally not happy. He's depressed. And in each and every condition, he will be under some kind of pressure. Mandi in the fourth house also makes sure that the old age of the person is filled with multiple unfortunate results. Mandi in the fifth house gives a problem with progeny. The person may not complete his education. His intelligence will be of average order. Even if the person is very intelligent, his intelligence is not reflected in his academic career. The person's ideas, even after thinking for long and preparing everything in advance, when he goes to implement his ideas, his ideas fail, leaving him in debt and a disastrous kind of a condition. Mandi in sixth house is very good. It saves a person from disease. If someone is having Mandi in the sixth house, don't have enmity with them. They will slay their enemies like everything. There is no competition for this person having Mandi in the sixth house. He is one of its kind. Right? But along with this, Mandi in the sixth house gives very serious issues like uh, being in coma, cancer, tumor, accidents, loss of limbs, etc. as well. Mandi in the seventh house is bad for marriage, relationship, and partnerships. Generally, there is a tendency that such people can get lost. And uh, they can lose a whole lot of things. If Mandi is in the seventh house, then generally these people, if they go to the foreign lands, they are harassed in the foreign countries. Mandi is in the eighth house is very bad. This person is generally unfortunate. If uh, ever he goes to do some uh, fortunate auspicious things, then some or the other kind of obstruction will be on his way. The life is a life is filled up of multiple bad events and like multiple things uh, in his life is not in his control, right? You know, Mandi in the eighth house is a kind of scenario where the person, you know, saved all his money to start a shop and the next day flood came, the next day earthquake came, that kind of a scenario. You know, Mandi in the eighth house is a very strong blow of unfortunate events in life along with this Mandi in the eighth house also curtails the longevity and makes the person generally unfortunate. 
the same results are carried uh, with the man in the ninth house the person is generally unfortunate uh, anything that he takes it into in his hands there are obstruction related to those things the relationship with fathers and the relationship with people in the government the relationship with people in authority is uh, challenged is bad generally gulika in the uh, sorry mandi in the ninth house person are cheated by their gurus and uh, mandi in the ninth house is a kind of a scenario where person faces difficulties in almost everything in life see many people are of the opinion that you know that astrology is very negative we only talk of negative things you should understand something astrology is a form of knowledge and there are two approaches to go through it you know i tell you all the good things and show you the dream of a fairy land world that is never going to be true or secondly i give you forewarning about what bad things can happen so that you can plan accordingly and save yourself from those bad things which approach you think is better comment below you know comment in the video what do you think is it better to show a fairy world to you and let you live in your mental uh, mental uh, state that one day that fairy tale will come true or to tell you the bad things that it is supposed to happen and you try to avoid it for an example see i say that kulika in the seventh house gives you a bad mental life gives you a bad marriage partner what does it mean it means that you should do a match making when getting married you should get married in a good muhurta and you should be careful about in your marital life don't create uh, you know small mistakes in marital life don't argue with your wife try to keep it happy understanding that your chart your chart is not very good for marriage right be careful in it you know uh, you must have heard people they will say that you know we don't believe in astrology see my mom and papa married without my mama and papa got married without uh, consulting their horoscopes without matching their horoscopes and see they have a good marital life of course when you have good combinations related to the seventh house you are going to get good partner you are going to get married into a good condition then right? because the chart is like that the real problem is when bad yogas surround the seventh house in that scenario you know there can be an error in matchmaking by the astrologer as well that's why you need an traditionally experienced traditionally learned astrology i try to understand my point the approach is to know what bad can happen and try to avoid it astrology is to tell you that today there is a probability that rain can happen so uh, rain can happen so take your umbrella right it, it is not a dreaming of a, a fairy world the ninth house the guru knowledge you know the guru gyan that is to be given in the ninth house going further gulika in the 10th house is very sorry mandi in the 10th house is very good i generally use the word gulika but traditionally mandi word should be used okay mandi in the 10th house is very good mandi in the 10th house parivesh in the 10th house bhuma in the 10th house is a combination for becoming an astrologer becoming a good astrologer mandi in the 10th house is very good the person is respected in society the person is famous valerus whatever uh, things he wants to do he will get it he will do it he is fortunate respected famous everyone is proud of him he is most prominent most rich and most happy in all his siblings right people respect him and he is in a higher position in his professional life and he is you know like everyone respects him he is powerful as well as rich he enjoys his life and lives very peacefully right now coming to mandi in the 11th house it is very good for money it is very good for wealth it is very good for fulfillment of wishes and desires mandi in the 11th house gives you a very good wife very good life partner very supportive life partner it gives you awards accolades recognition fulfillment of wishes and desires good amount of money makes you rich and gives you all comforts and luxuries in life mandi in the 12th house may force a person to leave his homeland mandi in the 12th house can make a person humiliated can make him go to jail mandi in the 12th house generally have the tendency to make a person aloof 
the person will be left by everyone. There will be no good company with him. Mandi in the 12th house is an indicative that the person is having bad friends. So he should not listen to his friends, whatever they are saying. He should not go with the advice of his friends, of course. Right? And uh, along with this, Mandi in the 12th house is also a combination for the person losing a whole lot of money, prestige, etc. by getting uh, cheated by. Uh, fake gurus and by being involved in dubious institutions right mandi in the 12th house is also a combination for jail defamation loss of prestige and the person being humiliated is also a combination for mandi in the 12th house right but don't forget to calculate mandi correctly using the formula that i have just showed you at the starting of the video that is very essential and important Right. I I I must have left that part and made the video easy. I must have left that part in the introduction section of the video to make it short, to make it more crisp. But why I took time to you know refer to my article? Because if you calculate Gulika and Mandi, if you don't calculate Gulika and Mandi in a good way, if you calculate Gulika and Mandi wrong, then there is no way that predictions will come true. Right? You have to understand this particular fact. Gulika or Mandi, I will tell you remedies for all the twelve houses now. Then we go to the science. Gulika in the ascendant, you should have a standing image of your Ishta Devata, of your favorite deity, standing image of your favorite deity, and you should pray to him every day. Gulika in the second house, donate money to temple. Gulika in the third house help people by giving your services. Gulika in the fourth house donate brick and building materials to temples. Gulika in the fifth house donate money to poor people. Gulika in the sixth house donate medicines to people suffering from illness. Gulika in the seventh house give money in kanyaadan. Gulika in the eighth house donate jewelry. And money, and this this have to be a huge donation because Gulika in the eighth house is a real problem. Gulika in the ninth house donate images of God, or donate idols of God, or donate books related to God such as Bhagavad Gita. Gulika in the tenth house try to help people for free. Gulika in the eleventh house give one tenth of your donation to some temple. Gulika in the twelfth house try to give sleeping things. Try to give the bed sheet. Below bed, try to give things uh, home related things, you know, things related to sleeping and sitting to needy people. And Gulika in the twelfth house, you can also give bonus to you know low wage workers, or you can also give money to low wage workers, or you can also give bonus to people working under you. These are some of the remedies. But once again, you remember something. I will tell you one one particular thing. Yeah, that. When people take consultation from me, I have seen many people telling me that, sir, we have did this remedy, watching this video, and it haven't worked. Like predictions are chart made. You know, you see everything in the chart, then you suggest a particular, then you give a particular prediction, right? There can be no prediction of planet in a particular house. There can be no prediction of planet in a particular rashi. You have to see the configuration of the complete horoscope before giving a prediction. The same is the case with the remedy as well, right? You have to see the configuration of the whole horoscope. You have to check the complete horoscope, and then you have to give remedy. Like reading a chart is a huge system. In the same way, suggesting remedies is once again a huge system. You know. In in my tradition, I was taught how to suggest remedies for two and a half years, and let me tell you from my experience, there is a whole lot of consideration before suggesting any remedy. You cannot just open your mouth and give any remedy to anyone. Remedies backfire as well. There are negative results of remedies as well, right? So there is a very detailed analysis before giving a remedy as well, right? This is something that needs to be understood. Gulika in Aries generally gives problems related to professional life. Once again, remember these 
bad results will not come if gulika is in the third sixth tenth or eleventh house or if gulika makes the good combinations that i am going to mention after this right otherwise these problems are going to come gulika in aries there is problem related to profession there is problem related to prestige and there is defamation gulika in taurus the person's hopes wishes and desires will not get fulfilled and there can be a problems related to wealth gulika in gemini the family life is not happy the person is generally depressed lives in tension uh, there are a whole lot of problems in making a home uh, there are accidents related to vehicle and the person can get also get cheated in terms of property gulika in taurus the result is same as gulika in cancer the result is same as taurus the hopes wishes and desires doesn't get fulfilled there are problems with elder there are problems with siblings gulika in, in cancer there is problem with siblings and the daily income of the person is highly compromised there are financial issues when gulika is in leo the person is generally gulika in leo is considered good mandi sir gulika in mandi whatever mandi in leo is considered good right mandi in leo is good there is generally bad relationships with the sibling the hard work of the person doesn't yield the expected results the person is generally under achieved under recognized under paid and there are supposed to be problem related to progeny and problem related to love affairs gulika in virgo creates a serious personality related issue the in, the person the person's intelligence is not good even if the person is intelligence his intelligence is not reflected in his words or actions no matter how much learned he is he will always act and behave like a foolish person the person is generally not dependent very much self centered egoistic and the person will be you know suffering from the person will su uh, will suffer from diseases and there will be problems related to uh having made bad decisions in life the person will not think enough before taking before taking a decision before doing something and later on will repent on why i did this gulika in libra makes the person diseased there are many enemies many challenges in life despite the fact that the person does good to everyone he is always cheated and uh, yeah uh, people are uh, jealous of him without any reason and he is always forced to be into fight even with the family members gulka in scorpio once again creates serious personality issues the person is egoistic uh, the person's work uh, you know the, the the person is egoistic the person is self centered the person doesn't think before doing things he will repent on the things that he is doing no matter how much learned he is he takes a decision like a foolish person and other than this the person is generally unfortunate he has opposition from his parents he doesn't find a good guru he doesn't find a good guide and he lands in problem with people in authority people in government and people stronger than him people possessing more power than him gulika in sagittarius is bad for longevity the life is generally filled with unfortunate events the person is very egoistic the person is very self centered the person always thinks of himself and he will make bad decisions in life and will repent because of it like what, what do i mean by the person will take bad decisions in life and will repent on it suppose the person fights with someone who is very who is at a struggling phase right suppose you fight with someone who is at a struggling stage and after some years you find that this person became really very successful and he reaches in a position from where he can help you so at that point of time you actually repent on why i fought with this person back then on such a small topic i must have not fought this is what i am referring to gulika in capricorn the person have a lot of disease the person have a lot of disease the person have a lot of tensions troubles gulika in capricorn gives you 
know, gives you hereditary diseases. Along with this, it gives you fatal diseases like it gives you fatal diseases like cancer, tumor, etc. Gulika in Capricorn uh, makes the person unfortunate. People working under him plan things against him. Everyone cheat. Everyone cheats him. Everyone wants to do bad with him. Right? He have no real friends in the world. He goes through humiliation. His professional life is compromised. He have to struggle a lot in his professional life. Even for the smaller, com small, small comforts in life, he will have to struggle a lot. Along with this, he can be cheated by many people, and he will get blamed unnecessarily, uselessly. Gulika and Aquarius, the person is hardworking, but he doesn't get results, recognition, fame as per his hard work. Gulika and Aquarius, there is a bad relationship with siblings. And uh, the person is not rewarded enough as per his hard work. Gulika and Aquarius, once again, uh, yeah, Gulika and Aquarius, once again, the person is self-centered, repents his decision, doesn't think before writing and speaking and uh, repents later on because of this. Along with this, Gulika and Aquarius have a tendency of hiding things from everyone, but the things will be known to the whole world by the way of exposing or by the way of scandal. Gulika and Aquarius is a combination for scandal being out. Like it, it is a case where the person wanted to hide something from public eyes and he tried so much to hide it. But one mistake and everything became exposed to everyone, which he never wanted to happen. Gulika in Pisces gives problem related to children. Gulika in Pisces, generally the person gets very good ideas, but when he goes on to implement his ideas, the ideas doesn't work as expected. There is always a lack of planning. There is overthinking. His students betray him. There is no one by his side. It is a financially bad condition. He suffers financially. He doesn't have many people by his side. People don't give him good advice. And along with this, I want to tell two, three more results for Pisces. I don't know. Uh, but okay, so and when you learn astrology and tradition, now right, you get all those coded in your mind, so you can tell n number of results as you want, right? Gulika in Pisces will also make a person emotionally dried up, he will want to connect emotionally with, with people, but he will end up emotionally hurting them, right? And Gulika in Pisces makes a person very untidy in character and living, that is generally a problem. Now, there are many conditions, there are many, many conditions when Gulika gives good results. And if you want to master Gulika, I will tell you one thing. I have done a webinar previously, a one-day webinar on Aprakash Graha and Upagrahas. And Gulika is one of the Aprakash Graha. That webinar is available to be purchased on my website. Right? You go to my website. Go to this webinar section and here you will find a Prakash Graha and Upagraha webinar for 2,500 rupees only. It is one class that I have done where I have not only covered Gulika, but I have covered Dhoom, Upaketu, Yamakandak, right? Mandi, Gulik, Vritipad, Paridesh, Indrachap, Kal, Virtu, Ardhapadhar, all of them, all of these planets I have covered in this webinar. So you can purchase it from the website and you can purchase it from the website. It is a two hours and 54 minutes of video with many example charts. And it have a whole lot of secrets from the Kerala tradition for predicting a horoscope. Right? Particularly three combinations related to benefic results of Mandi that I will want to mention. First thing, as I have already told you, Mandi in the third house, sixth house, tenth house, and eleventh house gives good results related to the significations of these respective houses. You know, the dispositor of Mandi, the second technique, the dispositor of Mandi. Suppose Mandi is in Aries. Then the dispositor of Mandi is Mars. If the dispositor of Mandi is well-placed, 
if the depositor of money is well placed now in this well placed there are two conditions one being in kendra and being powerful if the depositor of money depositor is the lord of the sign where the planet is situated so if the money is in aries the depositor is mars if the money is in taurus the depositor is venus if the money is in gemini the depositor is mercury etc if the depositor of money is exalted own sign moon trigon etc don't consider retrogression here the retrogression of the depositor of money is even more terrible and problematic if the depositor of money if the rashi lord of money is exalted own rashi varagottam moon trigon etc in that condition the person is very influential blessed and rich if the depositor of mandi if the sign lord of mandi is situated in kendra first house fourth house seventh house tenth house or kona first house fifth house or ninth house in that scenario the person have a raj yoga which means the person is professionally successful he is respected in society and he is best among his kinsmen best among his kinsmen best amongst his kinsmen means he earns more than his siblings he is more respected than his siblings etc one second is you have to check the navamsha depositor of money to do that you check in which navamsha money is situated and the lord of that navamsha is the depositor of money so if the money is in taurus navamsha venus if the money is in virgo navamsha then mercury if the money is in capricorn navamsha then saturn becomes the navamsha depositor if the navamsha depositor of mandi is powerful in d1 chart powerful means exalted mool trigon so rashi varg uttam these four conditions if the navamsha depositor of mandi is powerful in d1 chart in that scenario the person is blessed by gods whatever wishes and desires he may have that wishes and desires will get fulfilled for sure whatever wishes and desires he have he will get those wishes and desires unexpectedly that wishes and desires will get will come to pass the people surrounding him will be very good people they will give very good advice and people around him will be his real well wishers who will come to his rescue at difficult times the navamsha depositor of mandi being well situated is also a combination for very good spirituality and very good spiritual progress right these are a few conditions where mandi works very well there is one more thing that i will want to mention if you have patiently listened to the video up to this extent that if mandi is conjoined with an exalted planet or if mandi is conjoined with a planet who is in own rashi or if mandi is conjoined with a planet who is varguttam or if mandi is conjoined with a planet who is in a mulatrigon sign in that scenario also mandi gives very good results and in that scenario mandi gives professional success children marriage good wife and everything to the native in that scenario mandi is the planet who takes the person to great heights i think i have covered almost all the aspects of uh, mandi if there is anything left remember that i have covered a whole lot of things in the webinar that i just mentioned thank you for watching the video and being on the channel namaskar